Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can inject a SIF UI view into a UI kit application. And then when the view, the SIF UI view does something, like you select something, that will tell the UI kit view to refresh itself. All right. Now we're starting with a basic application. You can see there's really nothing much going on. I don't really have any storyboards. I've already deleted that. If you do want to learn how to start your app without the storyboards, I have a different video on it. I will link it in the YouTube description. Now the origin of this video is that I am actually working on a brand new course with iOS, with UIKit, programmatic uh, interface and everything, no storyboards. And one of the sections actually talk about that, how we can integrate some SIF UI controls or views in our UI kit application. So the first thing what I want to do, and I will show you also in the course, uh, which is currently being built, it's not completed yet, is I always want to see the preview. Even though I'm using a view controller, I would love to see a preview of what I'm doing. Even though I'm typing UI kit code and I'm using UI label or something, I want to see the preview. So let me go ahead and show you first that how we can create the preview and then we can move to creating and using our, you know, SIF UI controls. So I'm going to go ahead and create a struct view controller representable, which will be UI view controller representable. Now it does, it, UI view controller representable is a protocol and I must implement the make view controller, which will simply go ahead and create a controller and return it. And the other function is the update view controller, which we're just going to leave it blank. The view controller is not being updated anyways, so we don't really want to implement that. And that is pretty much it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to simply create a preview. So previews, which will be preview provider, static var, previews, and what we are going to return will be the view controller representable. And that's pretty much it. Now you should be able to see your previews. Let's go ahead and click on this guy over here and then do it again. And there we go. We can see the preview. And now I can go ahead and update the color and save it and it works. All right, let me go ahead and change it to gray color or something. Okay. So now what we really wanted to do is I wanted to create a picker control. Now I can create a picker control in UI kit. It does provide you with the picker control, but you know, creating a picker control in UI kit, it might be a little bit too much work. So I decided that why not just create this picker view in Swift UI. Now you should do this, what I'm about to do, you should probably do this in a separate file. But just to keep the code in one file, I'm going to go ahead and say category picker view. All right, this will be a view. So this is our SIF UI view. And I need to implement the body. And right now we're just going to go ahead and return category picker view. Okay, nothing more. Always a good idea to start very, very simple so that we can see that can we even display this category picker view in our control over here or not, all right? So the first thing would be, well, how do we load this category picker view? Well, let me go ahead and create something called a hosting controller, which is UI hosting controller, and we can pass in the root view, which will be a SIF UI view, which can be category picker view. And now I can say something like, view dot add sub view and we can call hosting controller view dot view so this is hopefully going to start adding the view to the controller i do have to add some constraints to these things so adding constraints uh, we can do this in multiple ways i guess what we can do is we can say hosting controller the view dot translates false and I can go ahead and add some other stuff to it. Like if I want to put it in the center, I can go ahead and constrain equal to the view dot center dot is active equals to true. And you can already see that the category picker view is getting displayed. All right. I can also go ahead 
and use a center of y, which means that it will be completely in the center. There we go. So we got our category picker view, which is the SIF UI view, getting displayed right there in our UI kit. Now you can obviously, uh, you know, refactor this code so, so that you don't have to type in, you know, hosting controller.view, hosting controller.view, just create a different thing. But right now that's fine. So now the question is, well, how do we create a picker view? So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and create a picker view. I'm going to say picker and categories. Selected category will be let's just say category, okay? And some sort of uh, over here, we're going to do something to display the category. So first, I need to create a state variable where we can go ahead and add this category. So I'm just going to go ahead and say category, which will be string. And right now there is no category being selected. So I'm just going to leave it to be uh, nullable or optional. So there are no categories right now. Now we go back to the picker view and see that how we can construct this. So I'm going to go ahead and create some categories. Let's go ahead and create categories. Let's say, uh, you know, beverages. Let's go ahead and create a category with food, uh, condiments, and so on, all right? So ice cream or dessert, and so on. So now we should be able to run a loop and display all these categories in a picker view. So I'm gonna say categories, and the ID in this case will be self. We will get access to the category. Simply going to display this part in a text view over here. We'll say category, which is simply a string, okay? And probably over here, we should call it selected category. And let's go ahead and update that part over here also. Okay. We want the picker view to be a wheel. So picker view style, wheel. Okay, there we go. And now we can select a couple of different things. And you can see that it was much easier to create a picker view, all of this, using SIF UI as compared to UIKit. Now, one of the problems we will have is when I'm selecting something over here, what I want to do is to tell the view controller, meaning the actual view controller with the SIF UI, uh, the UI kit, that, hey, I have selected something and displayed my selection. But displayed where? I mean, we don't really have anything where we can display, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and create, let's say, category label. So some sort of a control that we can create where we can go ahead and display it. So I'm just gonna create a very basic label. Let's go ahead and call it label. And we can say label dot false return the label. So it's a pretty simple kind of a label. The only thing we need to do now is to make sure that the label is actually added. So let's go ahead and add that label. I'm gonna go ahead and probably add it before everything. So add label, this will be category label. And let's go ahead and set the text for the label. Category, so that we know that where the label is. Now, right now, the label is not really getting displayed because we haven't really figured out where to display the label. So what we want to do is you can give it some sort of, uh, well, there you go, I guess the label is there. And that's fine. I mean, you can put some other stuff on it if you want, but that is perfectly fine. I mean, you can, now we can, if you want, we can put some constraints on the category label. So I can go ahead and say category label dot center x constraint dot equal to the view center. So it's just gonna center it. Uh, so let's go ahead and say activate the constraint. There we go. So now hopefully you can see that our category label is kind of like in the center. You can move it also in a from the top or something. Let's see if we can actually put it there. Category label dot top anchor dot constraint equal to the view dot top anchor. And let's go ahead and add like maybe 60% more, 60 points of padding from the top. And there we go, okay? All right, so now the main question is that when I'm going through this and I select one of these beverages or one of these categories, I want this to refresh the label. But the problem is that this is part of the SIF UI control 
and this is part of the UI kit control. So the Swift UI control needs to somehow tell the UI kit control that, hey, you got to refresh yourself. And that's the main question that we need to answer. There are many different ways of doing this. One of the ways what you can do is you can introduce, you can do that using closures. So I'm going to go ahead and say on selected. Okay. And that will be a very simple closure, which is going to give you the category. This since the category is string, we're just going to use a string. And there we go. This means that in order to create the category picker view, you need to implement the on selected, but we are not really doing that over here. So this is another thing that you can actually do if you want, you can go ahead and create a lazy property over here. Uh, you can call it category, just so that you're a little bit more organized. Category picker view. This is going to return you a category picker view. We can go ahead and create the picker view. We will just call it picker view and then category picker view. But this time we can actually provide that, well, we will get the category and we will do something with it. Right now, I'm not really doing anything. And now we can start using this category picker view. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass the category picker view, which is also a lazy property. Okay. Well, that's fine, but the on selected is never really invoked. I mean, nobody is firing on selected. So at what point should we fire on selected? One of the ways that you can do that is to implement the on change modifier. On change modifier is going to fire whenever it is observing something, which you have to specify using the first argument. So I'm going to go ahead and say, whenever the selected category changes, you let me know. I will get the category in this case. So I'll just call it category. And then we can do something with the category. I think the problem will be that this particular selected category will never be fired. Well, the main reason it's not going to be fired is that we forgot to do the tag. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the tag and pass in the category. Okay. But still, it's not going to get fired because this one, the on change one, is kind of like looking at the selected category, which is optional. But these things, the category itself is just a string. So that's not optional. So one of the ways that you can actually fire on change for optional is to just wrap the tag with the optional. So this means that when this category changes, then fire selected category. So now hopefully it will fire and we will get category. You can see it's optional. We can go ahead and unwrap it. And now we can fire on selected and pass in the category. Great. So this means that whenever we select something, it's going to fire this category picker view and it's going to give me the category. And over here is where you can do something. I guess you can go ahead and say category label dot text equals to the category. And that's it. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and see that what's going on. Okay. So in this case, we will have to use a weak self because we are capturing a reference to something. Okay, that's it. And now let's go ahead and run it. So I'm going to select food, it sets to food. You can see that how our UI label in UI kit is changing. Dessert, condiments, food, beverages, desserts. Pretty cool, right? So this means that it is working correctly. Our Swift UI view is able to communicate with the UI kit label or Swift UI view is communicating. And uh, that's, that's it. I think the main reason that I use the Swift UI view is that it was just so much easier to create as compared to creating it in a different way in UI kit. So that was the main reason I created the category picker view in Swift UI. But we also learned a couple of many different things actually in this video that you can create a preview for your view controller, which is very, very, I think, uh, interesting. And it also allows you to visually see what's going on in your preview, which is very, very helpful. And you also learn how you can import uh, the category view. Now, another thing that I really want to do over here is, over here, you can see that we created this hosting controller, but we didn't really do much with the hosting controller. So one 
the other thing that you should do is you should probably go ahead and add this view controller by saying self.addChild. Let's go ahead and add the hosting controller as a child to the main controller. And we will also say did move to the parent. So we're just telling our hosting controller that you are now part of the view controller. All right. Or else sometimes the reference can go away and then you'll be in different kind of a trouble. There we go. Everything works. Great. So if UI view, talking to the UI kit, passing data to the UI kit label and displaying it. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my courses on Udemy. I do have a Black Friday sale that is going on right now. And you can see I have all of my courses are actually for sale. You can simply go to azamsharp.com slash deals and you will see a list of all the different courses that are available. Some of the courses even have like multiple coupons. So if you run out of coupon, you can go to the next one. And so check out my courses. And if you want to also donate money to, uh, to me, to the, to the content creators, uh, you can also do that using the YouTube thanks button. There should be a thanks button right there and you can press it and maybe uh, give money for uh, a cup of coffee or something. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Hope you have enjoyed this video.